small plate with like nothing on it. That is where we are currently in the bull market. And the next part of the bull market is actually the parabolic phase. Hello everyone. Today Rand Nooner talks about the latest Bitcoin pump and expectations of a huge altcoin boom, as well as he believes that Bitcoin has just smashed through $41,000 and it's showing no signs of slowing down. It's only a matter of time before these altcoins catch up. Join our vibrant community of like-minded enthusiasts as we decode market dynamics, discuss cutting-edge trends, and share valuable tips to navigate the exciting realms of crypto, Bitcoin, and stocks. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Because we told you so many times that this pump was coming. We even told you last week we're going to 42,000. That was the key level. Look, I said it for you guys over here. I said to you 42,000 for me is the key level. We've got to watch out for that 42,000 level because 42,000 is actually a big, big, big level. So it's a major Fibonacci uh, resistance level. We are at the 618 between 30 and 60. You've also got all this support and resistance playing out over here. That's why this is not a knife through warm butter anymore. And that's why when we got to the 30, the 42,000, and by the way, you can see the 42,000 is the biggest short liquidation section that we have had in Bitcoin, this bull market. So think about this right now at 42,000, there are more short stacked than anything else. So you've got to get them out the way. But if you can break through the 42,000, 48,000, it happens in a heartbeat. So I don't think it's going to happen as quickly as we got to 42,000, but rest assured that this is the next level. This is the, the next level. And the first time we hit 42,000, what happened? We had the altcoin DGENs quickly liquidated. I'm sure you guys watched and you saw your favorite altcoins. As soon as Bitcoin hit that 42,000, your favorite altcoin went down in a second. But what do we do in a situation like this? What do we do in a situation like this? We look for the altcoins that bounce the quickest because that gives you an idea of where the relative strength of altcoins is in this market. Remember, we're very, very, very early in the bull market. Because we're so early in the bull market, the market's giving us clues about what, what the long road ahead for this bull market is going to look like. What, what we saw today, tokens that went down and then bounced, those are the ones that you need to keep your eye on for the next level. Those narratives are the ones you need to keep your eye on. We'll talk about those narratives when we get to the altcoin section towards the end of the show. Um, but what I want to show you is that as soon as the 42,000 level was hit, this is what you saw. This is what you saw. So you saw the, the, the leverage coming down. Now, that looks quite scary. On the daily, that actually looks quite scary. You can see that, right? That's quite a scary dip in, in, in the leverage, which was quite high to begin with, right? Thing is, if you zoom out and you look at the leverage on altcoins, excluding Ethereum and Bitcoin, you can see that even after this little leverage dump, we're still at levels that we haven't seen since 4th of April, 2022. So the leverage is actually still very, 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 very high. And as I said to you guys earlier, you need to watch the coins that bounce because that is the narrative. Those are the narratives which the market is telling you are going to drive us into the, the, the next part of the bull market. So we said yesterday that this is the plate that they've given you. It's like that small plate with like nothing on it. That is where we are currently in the bull market. And the next part of the bull market is actually the parabolic phase. So the next part of this bull market is actually the parabolic phase. And you can see that, um, that all the, the, the chartists are basically showing you, look, we're repeating the fractal. This is the beginning part of it. The next part is parabolic. The next part is when we get the life-changing returns. You can see this as well. So this is from TechDev. TechDev is a very, very, very respected account. And he says, every time that this has been triggered, we went parabolic and topped in four to 10 months. While most are waiting for the halving, the liquidity is not. That's why I said to you at the beginning of the show that what's starting to happen here is that because of the ETF, the halving pump has kind of been moved back. Usually you would have to wait until the halving to get the real pump. But because of this ETF, it seems like the halving pump has actually moved, been moved back. Now, just look at what's happened here every time that we've been here at the green dot. 
you can see that every single time we've had a 6x, we had a 12x, and we have a 10x, we've had a 10x. Now remember, this is, we're talking about on Bitcoin. We're not talking about the altcoins, and the altcoins is actually where the real market is. So what we spoke about yesterday was we said, look, we've just completed that. We still have that left to go. So you can see that again, we've just completed the first little part over here, and the next part is actually the parabola. The next part is where we actually go parabolic. So that's what we, we have to, to look after. Now, just to, 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 to make what I'm trying to say to you a little bit clearer, you think about where we are with Bitcoin. So we are up this year. Let's, let's, let's be a little bit more scientific and accurate. So how much, have, how much percent are we up this year? Let's go to November, December, and we are in January. So there we go, January. We are now 155% up in the month of, we are now 155% up this year on Bitcoin, right? And that is actually a very, very, very average year for Bitcoin. So if you look at like, like where we're at, 2023 is actually a very, very, very average year when it comes to Bitcoin. We're only up 150%, which means that we're less than 2013, 2011, 2017, 2010, 2020, 2012. We're, we're less than all of those. And someone says, yeah, you know, uh, you know what would be funny if Bitcoin was to catch up to the previous cycle's trajectory before the halving? Because what they're saying here is that we're actually behind compared to the growth trajectory of previous ha halving cycles. So we're almost playing catch up because we got destroyed by by FTX and everything else. We're almost now having to play catch up. Now, if you got in at the bottom and you're playing catch up, that's the best ride of your life. And that's really the ride that that we're actually uh, going through right now. And the options market is actually saying the same thing. The options market is now starting to speak about $50,000 uh, Bitcoin at the end of Q1 2024. Now, we know that the options market has actually underestimated the Bitcoin pump this far. And now the, the, the majority of the options, you can see the call options, the majority of the call options are at a strike price of $50,000. So right now, what we're seeing is we're starting to see a kind of FOMO. It's, a, it's the kind of FOMO now. This is the irony for me. This is the irony. When you talk about this FOMO, this is the irony for me. We sat here right through the bear market and we said to you guys, let's start buying. I showed you my portfolio when I bought Rune, I told you at like 155 and I bought Solana at $13 and I bought Bitcoin at 19 and $18,000 and I bought it on size. And I kept saying to you guys, it feels uncomfortable, but the cycle is going to turn. And as a result, we have been very, very, very rewarded. And I, I saw this and I said like, it's so funny because at $18,000, nobody wanted Bitcoin. At $42,000, you can't believe how many people have called me in the last two days. And I'm sure you guys have got exactly the same phone calls. Hey, is it time to buy this Bitcoin? Should we be buying Ethereum? Should we just go straight into the meme coins? What, what should we actually be buying? We're starting to get this FOMO. And you know what the ironic thing is? The ironic thing is, is that when we're making no money, nobody wants to invest in our asset class. And up until now, to be honest, it's been quite tough. Like our profits have been down, our portfolios have been down, everything has been down. Now, as we start making money, more people want to be like us. More people want this financial freedom and this independence that we're setting ourselves up for. More people want the profits that we've got. And so they start coming in. And it's not only retail investors, because the truth is, when you look at retail investors, I just want to show you where we are in the cycle. So this is where we are in the cycle when it comes to retail investors. This is the YouTube subscribers to all the channels um, and the, the increase in YouTube subscribers. Now, I remember how much fun this section here was here. You see that now we have 4,976 people watching our show live. You can see that at, in, in the bottom of the YouTube numbers. In the bull market last year, we were getting between 8,000 and 15,000 live on every show. So this is just the beginning. This is like, this is the, 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 um, the um, anus bush, amuse bush. That's what it is. This is this part of the bull market. This is it. This is just, we're just here at this part of the bull market. We haven't yet seen the, the retail masses coming in. We haven't yet seen this chart starting to go up. And the more money we make, the more people are going to want to come in. And that's why if you look at um, micro strategies, I just want to show you this. So micro strategy is now up two and a half billion dollars on their Bitcoin purchase. So now you look at a, a normal Wall Street company and says, look, you can keep your treasury in Bitcoin, you can keep your treasury or some of your treasury in US dollars. By the way, Michael Saylor, who kept a lot of money in Bitcoin, is now up two and a half billion dollars. And that's more money than MicroStrategy has ever made in 
Not, not only is it more money than MicroStrategy have ever made in their entire lives, but it's a lot more money by a factor of 10x what they've made in, in, in their entire lives. Now, what do you think happens when that happens? People start looking at this and they go, might actually be a good idea to start holding some of that Bitcoin stuff on our balance sheet. And then you start getting the real, the real FOMO. And just remember that the accounting rules are actually starting to change in 2024. And that's going to make it more attractive for corporates to start actually putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet. So that's what you can see. That's what Michael, strategy, Michael Saylor's uh, looking at this, this morning. He's up $2 billion on his purchase. Huge numbers, huge numbers. The other thing is, that El Salvador is also now up on their purchase. So a lot of people ridiculed President Nayib Bukele. They said that he bought too high. I remember he was buying, he was trading on the toilet. I don't know if you remember that. In the last bull market, he actually traded altcoin, uh, Bitcoin on the toilet. He used to buy things, right? There you have a, a government of a country, a sovereign nation, buying Bitcoin on the balance sheet of a sovereign nation. And he said he was actually trading them on the toilet. Anyway, he's also now in profit. His profit now, he's up, okay, he's up only $3.6 million, but He's starting to be up. And what's the result of that is that he's now meeting with the leader of Qatar. And what we hear, we don't know if it's true or not. And even if it's not true, it doesn't matter because it's just, it's the, it's the, what I'm trying to show you is that as the prices go higher and higher up, the FOMO actually gets bigger and bigger. And because we're here, it means that we've been in for a long time and we're early. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Rand Nooner. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.